in the hygiene chair, you can impact so much more for patients. And this metric you're talking about, periodiagnosis, which I'm so glad you asked about, is so important for understanding this is why we're why why we're here as hygienists, right? Um, to help our patients become healthier. This is Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast where we ask the question, what does growth in dentistry look like to you? I'm Katie Polson, a dental hygienist and your host. Welcome to Growth in Dentistry. I'm your host, Katie Polson, and this is part two of our awesome episode with Mary Hughes and Stephanie Palmer from Dental Education Partners. Uh, if you'd missed the first episode, go back one, make sure you don't miss out. This is part two. We had such a great conversation. I wanted to extend it into two parts when we're talking about hygiene as not being the loss leader, but um, as being the driver of revenue for your practice, really some really great information uh, in that episode and also upcoming talking about uh, key performance indicators and what things to measure and how to do that. So you don't want to miss this episode. If you are, first of all, if you're new to the show, welcome. So glad to have you. Uh, please check out all of our other episodes. We've got some deep dive episodes that go into how practices um, are successful We've got some DSO episodes for those that are into that. And then we have some um, episodes like we're doing today where we have some of our key uh, KOLs or our partners or resellers or or really anybody in the industry who's got um, something important to say and we tackle problems. So uh, this this is part two of, of that kind of episode. Uh, if you are a return listener, welcome back. Thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind going and rating and re reviewing this podcast, it helps us immensely uh, to, to continue to uh, get more uh, eyeballs on what we're talking about. So thank you so much for doing that. If uh, Facebook is a place that you like to hang out, come join us there. We've got some great information and communication going on in that group and our Facebook dental intelligence community. And last but not least, if you are not a current customer of dental intelligence, but you'd like to be one or see how it can affect your practice, please go to get.dentalintel.com forward slash podcast to get um, $50 when you complete a demo to the show. So with all that being said, thank you and enjoy the show. If you are a hygienist or you are, you know, you've got a hygienist friend, you can pass her along this episode because- <laughs> Metrics are one of those things that, uh, and KPIs that as a hygienist prior to me really understanding the power of them, I was like, uh, I don't need a babysitter. Thank you. I, I know what I'm doing. Them. I know. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know. So let's get into, I, we've got five metrics here or something that we might want to talk about. And you can add more if you want. We've got periodiagnosis, periodontal disease that, or, or treatment that's completed fluoride mm -hmm. and reappointment percentage Four. Mm -hmm. let's talk about each one of them and their importance and how it actually can drive hygiene to be that dreaded outside of that uh, change your mind of being a loss leader. Yes. So. Well, you know, what's so interesting about that is the minute I say the word metrics mm -hmm. and I will say, you know, so, so what, when I say that, what do you guys think? And the hygienists are like, you're going to talk about money. Yeah. It's probably about, but actually, you know, it's funny KPI, mm -hmm. oftentimes people say, oh, well, you know, the KPIs of the business and, you know, it's like, I know what it's key performance indicators, or it's keeping people inspired to <laughs> want to do better, right. Than you did yesterday. And that's why we're in practice because we're yeah. always trying to better our best as a provider. Yeah. So to me, I've had days where if you said to me, Hey, Mary, how are you doing in Perio? I would say, Katie, I think I did this week, probably 47 quads of SRP. And then we look at my metrics and I actually only did about six, but it felt like 47 because <laughs> that really one guy felt like that one guy, go back. <laughs> that one guy he was at, I remember two o'clock on third. That's exactly what happens. And so what we think we're doing sometimes isn't actually what we're doing. And, and oftentimes the same thing being true with treatment acceptance with, when we look at the, the metrics of it, I'll say to the doctor. So tell me about your treatment acceptance. They say, Oh my gosh, Mary, I am just crushing it. I literally, I talk to patients and I just like, I feel like I just want to drop the mic and walk out of the room. And then I bring in and introduce operations front office manager. And I say, 
how is the patient acceptance? And she says, oh, or he says, I, it's, it's not good. It's not good. And the doctor gets pale and is like, what? What are you saying? Because there's uh, there's a disconnect between mm -hmm. when the patient's like, yes, uh, of course, yes, I understand completely. And they even have a look. Yeah. Of, yes, of course, debridement. <laughs> I use yeah. that word every day. And so <laughs> we feel like we've got them like right in there and that they are hooked in and they are like nodding. And we're like, right? Yes, that's right. But then they go up front and they're like, you know what? I'm going to wait on all of that because I don't really feel, I want to go research the word first, but they don't ever want to appear like they don't know what we're talking about. And so I think a key driver metric, a, a KPI is, is being able to keep people motivated to say what is happening when this starts to happen. Let's pull the numbers and let's just see what the numbers tell us. So periodiagnosis for me, mm -hmm. periodiagnosis for me, we learned, right. It's probably a board question. What the percentage <laughs> of adult patients over the age of 30 have periodontal disease. So we know that that is scientific evidence that we know to be true from the Center of Disease Control, as well as Perio, uh, the American Academy of Periodontology. We know this number and every one of us knows that. Now, if we pull that metric and we look at that metric and it does not reflect what the scientific data shows. That half of patients over have the age of 30, of right. periodontal disease. What does that mean? Well, it means one of two things. Either we are not recognizing and diagnosing periodontal disease, which anyone listening right now is like, no, girl, I know what that looks like and smells like. So no, it's not that. <laughs> or we're treating it, but we're using the wrong procedure codes for what we're doing. So it's either one of those two things. Mm -hmm. So then we have to diagnose because that's what we do in healthcare is we get all of our data together, our triage data, our blood pressure, heart rate, pulse, all of those things, which is what dental intel does for a practice. It brings all those metrics together. And then we put it all together and we make a, a, an educated decision or diagnosis or strategy of how to move forward for the outcome that we want. So it's really looking at those. When I say metrics, I'm talking, I was talking about the speedometer actually on the car because that's a metric. So I'm talking about a speedometer. You said money. I was talking about my car. On the way here, the sign on the street said one thing. My speedometer said something different. I thought it was a suggestion. My speedometer said something different. I got a ticket on the way here. Those are both metrics. Those are both metrics. And so we understand when we put something in the oven, we understand that the degree that reads out, that's a metric. So they don't have to be frightening and scary. They don't have to be all about money. This actually mm -hmm. tells us a story about our comprehensive care. And yeah. our numbers really are a reflection of that. Yeah. And of course, you know, all the dental professionals listening today are, are, are becoming more and more aware as yeah. more and more studies come out between the link of periodontal disease and overall health, the mm -hmm. systemic link. I mean, we watch CE about it ourselves. We teach CEs on it but it's mind boggling how many connections there are out there. And so truly for a dental practice, yes, the dentist wants to make money. Yes, the hygienist wants to make money too and deliver awesome patient care. But, but in the hygiene chair, you can impact so much more for patients. And this metric you're talking about periodiagnosis, which I'm so glad you asked about is so important for understanding this is why we're why why we're here as hygienists, right? Um, to help our patients become healthier. So we need that. We need mm -hmm. that. We need to measure that. Mm -hmm. And practice management softwares they don't spit out your periodiagnosis, right? Which is why we like to use the analytics that I you know have mentioned. Yeah, you guys yeah. have done a great job on. Yes, absolutely. And, and always open to, hey, can you measure this? And they're like, yeah. we're going to bring that up at our next meeting. We're going to talk about can <laughs> yeah, we measure right? Can and we so many of them they're able to do, which has been really awesome, actually. Yeah. Too. One thing that I would love to point out, and then you say KPIs, I love that you gave it a new name, but KP, they are key performance indicators and there are different key performance indicators for different people. They're, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like when people use the word like, uh, oh, dang, now I'm not going to be able to remember it. Um, oh, it'll come back to me. Ah, oh, God, I hate when my brain does this. But, Shuts right off. I know, right? But like it, it's supposed to be a key. Not there's not a hundred key performance indicators. There are a few. You yeah. focus on those, and once you get those nailed nailed down, then you move on to yes. the next one. Yes. So with um, growth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And that's really kind of and and it could, because it can be it can be really overwhelming to look inside our software or any analytic software for that matter and be like, oh, okay, I. I guess we're failing in everything is, I mean, like, is that oh, terrible? 
We're terminal. <laughs> We're terminal. This is just bad. Pull the plug. I know, <laughs> right? Going through too many KPIs is is mm -hmm. paralysis analysis paralysis, yes. and not enough tells doesn't tell us enough. So I think like reappointment rate things like that tell us how who is reappointing, who's most successful with it, who should really be doing it, who's good at doing it, and who's not. Yeah. Right? So different types of metrics really kind of let us know how many patients we're seeing right mm -hmm. per hour, even, you yeah. know, some hygienists are like, Oh my God, I, I literally, I see a ton of patients and you pull the, the metric or the key performance indicator. And actually I'm only seeing, I'm not even seeing one patient an hour. So, uh Oh, well, wait a minute. What does that mean? No, no. If you look back and then you can see where patients either short notice canceled, or they just didn't show at all, or they, and rather than get lost in the system, we actually can pull them up and see who they were and give them a call literally within 12 hours of missing the appointment just by clicking a button to see who didn't show. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like, that's really yeah. helpful to do. Yeah, it's super. I, I, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I it was just going to say, you bring up such an important point. It can be so overwhelming. Oh, yeah. And we, we have found that too. And so it is helpful to have somebody on the outside help you understand which ones are the ones we should be looking at regularly right. as um, a hygienist or a, a business team member or yeah. or a dentist, an owner. Um, what should we be looking at regularly? And then knowing that there's someone behind the scenes watching them all. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I mean, they are, they can be incredibly powering, like and powerful. Like they can empower you to do mm -hmm. better and they can empower your conversations with your, you know, between the two providers to like make decisions based off mm -hmm. of, off of metrics instead of emotions. Um, and we talked about, I went on, I want, before we, we, you know, finish out to talk about reappointment percentage, um, because I think like you talk about growth, right. And, and the hygiene department being the engine, I'm sure you can give your own examples, but this is one of those things I'll share. It and then I'm actually going to put it in the show notes as well, just so you guys can see it. And then you, and I'm sure you'll be able to back this up, but we did a scenario where we have active patients. So, um, scenario one and two, I'm actually just going to share my screen. I've never done this before on the show. This is the first time people but we really want to see what we're talking we're, about. We're happy to be a part of this. Yes. But I will also, um, say it. So those of you that are listening can understand it. We have two scenarios. We have uh, scenario one and two, both of them have the same active patients. They have the same annual new patients. Um, so like they have 1200 active patients and they have 240 new patients, um, a year. Mm -hmm. And one person, one practice is reappointing at 80%. So every time the patient comes in, they get the that, uh, patient scheduled back for a future visit, whether it be hygiene or a, a something else, a filling or whatever, restorative. Um, and the other practice is rescheduling, reappointing at 90%. That's only 10%. Both of them are actually exceptionally well. They, they do really well. If you track that over a 10 year period, that is the difference in revenue is over a half a million dollars. Unbelievable. Incredible. I, I love what you've shown here. This is amazing. So uh, easy the, to see how that translate directly into growth and just, it, it doesn't seem like 10% doesn't seem like, ah, uh, it's tiny. But, it's like a couple more people a day, right? That's maybe, right. maybe one or two. If you've right. got, I mean, if you've got 10 people that you see, you get one more person to schedule a day. That's it. And so over a 10 year period, you mm -hmm. as a hygienist brought in more than a half a million dollars right. to the mm -hmm. practice. It's unbelievable. And, and we talked about before how every office is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they leave it up to the front desk to schedule the next visit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the hygienist will do it in the back. But when there isn't that team synergy, when there isn't that right. process in place, so often that we see that that reappointment is not where it should be, mm -hmm. um, uh, and so that's where we can dive in and to help just, and it doesn't, it's not a lot. It's, 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 it's just seeing where we're at, what's maybe um, broken could be fixed and we clean it up. Yeah, yeah. It's really simple. Absolutely. I, a lot of times for growth too, you said, you know, dentistry, you know, for practice growth and a, a lot of dentists will say new patients. I need more new patients. I need yeah. more new patients. Can you get me new patients? I oh, want new patients. Oh, but oh. at the same time, when you run a snapshot from dental intel on the practice, or when you pull those metrics and you say, well, that's great. You want new patients. Totally agree. Every business needs new customers. Absolutely. Without a doubt. 
But if we're not capturing the ones that have already been existing with us, they already know us, like us, and trust us. They've sent us referrals. They've sent us their neighbors and family members. If we're not even keeping them on a in, in a pattern routine visit scenario, then no matter how many new patients we get, the problem will keep happening. So one of the other things that I love about Dental Intel too is that it looks at new patient reappointment rate. It costs us yeah. so much money just to get one new patient to walk through the door. And then if we don't reappoint them, it was, and sometimes they're just kicking the tires. And I understand that, that people maybe are looking for a new dental home and maybe they came in to get a feel for the practice so, and that's right. Yeah, but those should be few and far between. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 100% agree. And if we did all that work just to get them in the door, we've got to keep them in our, in our clutches and our family and our dental home. We have to keep them in our home. And that's really important. And that's something that I never looked at as a hygienist. Oh. I couldn't tell you how many of my new patients came back. I couldn't tell you, but now when I see it, I'm like, uh Oh, okay. So one of the things we got to fix first and foremost is is no patients left behind. We leave no man on the field. Everybody gets an appointment before they leave and especially yeah. our new patients. And if they don't reschedule, who's going to be responsible for calling the patient and saying, Hey, Katie, how was your experience at our office? We're mm -hmm. so grateful that you chose us to come in for a visit, but I'd like to ask, how was your experience? And while I have you on the phone sharing that with me, I'm going to make your next appointment. Yeah. If for whatever reason you escaped or whatever yeah. without getting that next appointment. Yeah. yeah. Your checks and balances and having the reports at your and at your literally at your fingertips mm -hmm. of who didn't leave reappoint so we can get after them right away. Right. Versus, you know, months later, it's like, oh my gosh. And now it's so much harder to get them back in. Having that actually the patient patient growth trend line is one of oh, the most I love that one. Yeah. things that 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 we look at that mm -hmm. really it's like Mary's talking about the doctors like yeah I got 60 new patients this month but then when you look at um it's like this revol revolving door right. or whatever we're like you have all these you. filing in but then you have this the, the whole, you, lost, you yeah. lost 60 to inactivity congratulations you, <laughs> right. you have your net zero congratulations right. because that was only like forty five thousand. walk on because right. you did best in digital recare systems, oh, automatic mm -hmm. texts and emails are going out. So it's being done and the front desk doesn't realize necessarily and the doctor doesn't realize, well, we're, we're, we're slowly, slowly, slowly losing patients and mm -hmm. no one's doing reactivation for those patients who haven't been in the last 18 months. And, and yeah. so, yeah, I think that, that, that is very, very important mm -hmm. to keep an eye on. And yeah. And I think that you're, I'm sure when you talk to team members, they want to be involved in this process. They just they don't do. understand the importance of it, they right? Do. Like as a hygienist before, I, if you would have like told me like, Hey, you really need to reappoint those people. I'd be like, sure. Okay. Is this good for you? I, I don't, I don't really care. Like, what is this? I, it's a weird conversation to have like, Hey, do you want to come back and see me again? Like it's weird, <laughs> but <laughs> Could you help shape that a little bit, Katie? Yeah. Albert, that was really a good, that was great try at it. Most of us in IG and that's what we sound like. And when the patient answers were like, uh, well, I didn't actually think you were going to answer. So I'm not sure what I'm going to say next. But yeah. <laughs> when the one things we do ask when patients don't reappoint, any hygienist will tell you this. What do you mean they didn't reappoint? What did I do wrong? Why didn't they come? Like we personally uh -huh. feel it, right? Yes, personally. But we could pick them up, pick up the phone and just say, how was your appointment? Uh -huh. What could yeah. we have done better? What did we do well? Mm -hmm. what could we have done better. Yeah. Any of those questions, instead yeah. of just wondering, going, it was probably, it was probably because I talked about, it was probably because I talked about going to the concert and you know what I mean? All the things that we internalize for ourselves. Uh -huh. I think it's, yeah. It's really and good. you know, it's really good. Even if you just want to reappoint everyone onto another hygienist schedule besides yours, <laughs> that's good too. It still counts as reappointment. You know, I mean, like I spend a lot of time reappointing some of my favorite patients over, over to another hygienist. <laughs> only the favorites, right? <laughs> Katie, Katie only. <laughs> yeah, Katie. Right. Oh my gosh. Every time it said that, I'm like, why? I know. <laughs> and then they all get lumped together on the same day. And you're like, do you, are you trying to see if you are can destroy me? To kill and me break my spirit in one day or what? <laughs> really, it's okay that someone else sees you. It's really okay. Oh my I gosh. Mean, some patients, if they were put in my schedule and they were a Katie only patient too, yeah. it's sort of like you feel like the, we start off apologizing. I'm so uh. sorry. Actually, I, I scored higher than she did in high <laughs> school. I'm going to put you right back in her schedule. Don't worry, because we sort of take it personally. I know. In healthcare in general, we do definitely in dentistry, but this is something that when we celebrate our successes, one of the best things for a lot of our clients that we work with is when we can do our shout outs. 
And you can truly see when you do something well, and it's like you talk about a high five feeling when you, a lot of times we will use um, our metrics, our hygiene metrics for hygienists mm. to set their professional development goals mm. just for the quarter, not about money, treat everything as though it's free. I just want you to know, I want to know what you want to work on. What do you want to get better at as a provider? And so we can set those goals, right? So some doctors might, they might want to improve their diagnosis rate. They might want to improve their treatment acceptance rate. Well, when you see that, when you focused on something, it's like getting an A. And you see that the next month and you review those or in the quarter doing the clinical conversations, you're just like, yes, that's exactly why I do. It's so, it's so re rewarding. It really yeah. is because we don't get that that often. In dentistry. No, never. Yeah. Heart, yeah. The, I, I the mean, green arrow up. I just love those. Yeah. My, right. Yeah. Totally. Well, we ought to take what we can get because, you know, when your patients just keep coming back with the same problems, you're like, well, am I even making a difference here? I feel yes. like I'm not. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, I, this has been such a fast hour. Holy Hannah. Um, I'm going to ask my last question that I asked to everyone. And it's uh, because growth means a lot to us at dental intelligence. And it means a lot. Um, it means something different to everyone. So mm -hmm. I'd love to know what, what does growth in dentistry mean to both of you? That is, that's the, the, the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, well, I, I would just have to say that, you know, coming from the analytics numbers kind of person, growth to me, seem, um, it means advancing upon where you were before. So it's continual improvement from where you were before, whether that's financial growth, whether that's um, improving your patient care outcomes, whether that's it, you're in your job and, and you got to a little bit of a raise because you're helping the doctor make more money. Um, to me, it's advancing on where you were before. And as a whole, as an industry, it, it could be advancing that we are moving the needle and that it's okay to say perio. Yeah. <laughs> and tell them. We're, tell actually, them. we're not, we're going to treat patients for what they need and deserve and not what insurance dictates. Yeah, that that's is, a big that one. Really that's good. a big one. It is. If, I think it is that improvement. I think it is. I also think too, if we can get more like healthcare in every way, because we truly are the providers that our patients see more than they see anyone else. Mm -hmm. But if we can start to take a look at the way that we actually care for patients, right? Whether they're 25 or 65, we have to age with them in dentistry. You know, in medicine, as soon as you hit 50, you get all these special happy tests that you're allowed to have now. And you have to have, they're required to have because we have systemic issues the physiology of the body. I think in dentistry, we have to do the same thing and want to improve our patient care and our outcomes, wanting to see a better outcome and being able to measure the outcome and also be able to back it with, with statistics, with numbers, because we are very number driven. If we, we know the difference between four millimeters and six millimeters, we are all about numbers. We really are. Yeah. And I think it's really just measuring that. And then, like you said, improving performance, patient outcomes, as well as the business side. Awesome. Well, I've learned a ton. I'm sure that the people that are listening, I've learned a ton. And if they want to get a hold of you or learn more about what you could do for their practice, how can they do that? Absolutely. You can uh, go to our website, dentaleducationpartners.com. Um, from there, we have a, a contact us form. Um, certainly, of course, you can email us, uh, my email is steph, S-T-E-P-H, at dentaleducationpartners.com. And Mary's is M-A-R-Y at dentaleducationpartners.com. So we, we look forward to hearing from you. We thank you so much for having us on your podcast today. Uh, it's really been, been a great. pleasure. Um, thanks, Dental Intelligence. And thank you for everyone who stayed on, on board on this journey with us yeah. listening. Yeah, awesome. I'll make sure that those links are also in our show notes for those of you that don't um, can't remember or like to check it out a little bit later. So, well, thank you again. Thank you both of you for taking the time to, to join me. It's been such a pleasure. This has been growth in dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast. I'm Katie Polson. Keep growing.